Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting this little stone. So I decided to go with a champagne color for the base coat. I ended up having to do several coats of it for this one. The paint was very translucent so I ended up doing probably about four coats even though I had already primed the stone first with gesso. I still had to go in and do multiple coats for that base coat. To start the stone off I just started with a four pattern or a plus pattern and then slowly filled in the dots in between and for the next couple rows I am just placing dots in between the dots of the previous row which will get me this nice symmetrical look to the start of my mandala if you are liking these videos I uh, will you please do me a favor and like share comment and uh, please subscribe so on this one i am using liquitex soft body paint so i didn't actually thin this one down with pouring medium i just added a little bit of liquid white paint to it and that was enough to thin the paint down for me and i just kind of went from there so on this one i knew i needed to leave some negative space because i really wanted that background to shine and have its own moment when i create these i just kind of go with it i don't really have a plan and i just kind of see where the piece takes me so I decided to do this first row of walking the dots I did notice that some of the detail would get lost if I ended up doing like all walking the dots for the next several rows so I did decide to go to swipes after that but I went ahead and completed this first row and to walk the dots you just dip your tool once usually and then you just slowly place dots going around a bigger dot and as you do that you're going to naturally have less and less paint on your tool which is going to create smaller and smaller dots so this is a technique that i use a lot in a, um, almost all of my work i'm a huge fan of walking the dots it's very therapeutic for me and calming and they can really add a lot of dimension to your piece so i tend to gravitate towards them a lot with my work next i place the first dot first and the way i do it is i'm looking across the stone because i don't have guidance lines by doing this this allows me to kind of visualize and see the line without there being a line there and I can line up my dots this is a technique I learned for we had like access to like wooden pebbles so easily or even being able to make our own stones with natural rocks you have natural curves and like one side of the rock may be thicker and thinner on the other side so it can kind of throw off the mandala because you'll end up having less room on one half of it and more room on the other half so it can really affect the symmetry so i learned this trick of looking across the stone and just kind of going with it and working with the stone instead of trying to make the stone work with me so now that i have these nice symmetrical stones i don't need guidelines for most of my work it's just the way i've always created because i kind of just adjust the piece as needed if i have a little bit too much space on one side and another side is a little bit too close i can just adjust it with my next couple of rows and um, make it all kind of even out i really do suggest you try doing it this way it really helps you especially when you start doing like more curved surfaces where maybe you can't add guidelines this is a really good technique for you guys to practice and it's all about just kind of looking across that stone and just kind of visualizing that straight line and then just looking at the spaces you're creating and if one side has a little bit more room another side has a little less room then on the side that you have a little bit more room more spacing you just kind of make your dots just slightly bigger and no one's going to notice it in the end it's going to look like a perfectly symmetrical stone but if you have guy lines down then you're just going to see like oh i might be a little bit off that guy line and you know and it can kind of scare you and then you're going to end up with like this wonky shaped mandala um so that's the way i've always just kind of done it that's the way i prefer it even when i do place guidelines i tend to just remove them anyway um sometimes guidelines save me so it's just one of those things i do think it's easier to use guidelines in general but that's just not the way i started so um for me this is just the way i enjoyed more because i feel restricted with a guy lion sometimes so on this part i knew i wanted to build out another petal section but i also knew i did not want this petal section to connect 
to the center section. I wanted to leave negative space there. And one of the big reasons why is because if it all connected, it's just going to all start to look like a bunch of blue dots and swipes. And it would be a little bit harder to keep these different areas defined. But I made sure to kind of, I went with the same kind of pattern I did on the first petal section. But I made sure to keep these dots small so that I had enough room to go around without getting anywhere near the previous row. With these, I just kind of take my time. I do um, count my dots and I try to get them the same on each one. But if one has an extra dot or something, I, I don't go back and fix that. I just let it be because once the piece is done, you're not going to be able to notice. I do like to like repeat patterns when I go to like another row sometimes um, because it becomes like a meditative process for me. I don't have to think about it. I know I really like the way that first row turned out and I kind of just wanted to kind of repeat the pattern again. Um, sometimes if I don't like the way that first row turns out in the next row, I will change it up, do something different uh, and that will bring more interest into the piece. So you can kind of just play around with it. But even if like maybe that first row didn't work out, if it's because you wish you would have used a different color, larger dot, well, remember, you can always change that with top dots. So once you start adding top dots, you can really change the piece and the way it looks a lot. So always keep that in mind and think of the bigger picture and not so much um, each individual stages because top dots can drastically change a piece if you want it to. So with these swipes, I am just using a it's kind of like a nail dotting tool stylist but it's super small it's actually made for embossing and i have a link to that down below it's um i get it off amazon i haven't seen it anywhere else um, but i'm sure you can look it up and see but you can pull up my um, amazon links and you can see exactly what it's called and be able to search from it from there but so far amazon's the only place i've ever seen this thing um, they have several different sizes i just get the smallest dot size and it is smaller than the normal nail dotting tool so the nail dotting tools that you have this is a lot smaller than that so I just continued working out these petals. I'm just really taking my time, especially on these swipes. If I don't end up having enough paint, I will just go back over it again, like reload my tool, go over it again, and then that will give me enough paint and room to make the swipe the way I like. Sometimes I also make that dot and then go back and get more paint to complete the swipe because I can tell that I'm not gonna make it very far because I didn't get enough paint on my tool. Just remember to take your time and be patient. Um, this video is sped up. It is like twice the speed. So that gives you an idea of how slowly I am actually making these swipes. Just be sure to take your time and they do take some practice. So on this part, I really wanted to do that dark blue going around to kind of help define those swipes a little bit more. Um, because if I would have kept going all light colors, then they're going to start blending in with that base color, just kind of getting muted down. So adding those dark swipes really helps define it and kind of bring it all together. I then did these like little petal swipes, like long petal swipes to kind of fill in this space. And then once again, I brought in that dark blue to kind of separate the little sections and to kind of help define both of those. And I am tad obsessed with this stone um, i end up doing this design in two other colors as well so this is the first one in all blues which is my absolute favorite color to work with so tend to use that when i'm outside of my comfort zone and with this base color i wasn't really sure i've done a couple of um, pendants in this base color um, but i went with all kind of like copper colors in black and stuff so this is my first time using like a blue or a different color on it and i'm really happy with the way this one turned out i just did the lighter top dots um to give the piece more depth and if you guys like this video and the way i talked through it just please leave a comment down below so i know to make more of these if you have any questions leave them down below i will be doing another video on this style so i can answer any of your questions then and if you like this video please like and share and please subscribe thank you